Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss solution of a very good question, which was asked in net exam. It was asked in net June 2021. The question is actually related to both classical mechanics and electromagnetic theory, basically electrostatics. So the question is related to finding angular frequency of vibration of a diatomic molecule. Sorry, it is a diatomic molecule, but it actually uh, consists of two dipoles. The so molecule actually consists of two dipoles. It is made of two dipoles. So this is a dipole and this is another dipole. And this molecule is vibrating. So we have to calculate its frequency of oscillation. So question says, see, a linear diatomic molecule consists of two identical small electric dipoles with uh, an equilibrium separation R. So this is the equilibrium separation R between the two, which is assumed to be constant. This R we are assuming to be constant. Now, dipole has charge plus Q and minus Q. So these charges are plus Q and minus Q. This is minus Q. And similarly here, this is plus Q and this is minus Q. And mass of these molecules are M, you know, uh, of mass M. So this also has mass M. This has mass M and this also has mass M. And these are separated by distance R. So the separation here is R, and here also separation is R. So when the molecule is uh, is at equilibrium, so when uh, everything is in equilibrium, this separation is capital R, and this separation is small R. Okay. This separation is not going to change, as the question says. This capital R is con assumed to be constant. It says this capital R is constant. But if molecule vibrates, see, see if this dipole vibrates then this R will change, this R will also change. Okay, but this capital R is not going to change. Okay, now question says, each dipole can execute SHM about uh, SHM of angular frequency omega. So if this dipole vibrates like this, okay, it's angular frequency is omega. So we actually know that that omega uh, is actually equal to root under K by mu. Okay, so mu is the uh, reduced mass actually. And K here is actually the force constant or bond strength that we can say. Okay. So reduced mass, if you calculate here, it will come out to be mu is equal to, we know that M1 into M2 divided by M1 plus M2. So from there, you will get M by 2. So we can write this as K and divided by M by 2 here. Okay. This is M by 2. So basically, it will become 2K by N. So we can write omega is equal to root under. So here I'm writing omega is equal to root under. 2k and divided by m. That's what we have. K is unknown for us. Okay. Final answer we have to express in terms of omega. So from here we can calculate k. So k is coming out to be uh, this is equal to m omega square and divided by 2. Okay. This is m omega square divided by 2. That is the value of k here. Now question say, says recall that uh, the interaction potential between two dipoles of dipole moment P1 and P2 separated by R12 is, so this is a standard interaction energy formula between two dipoles, which we learn in electrostatics. Okay. So this, this is a P1 dot P2 minus 3 P1 dot N cap and P2 dot N cap. N cap is basically vector from one dipole to another dipole. So N direction of N cap is this actually. This is the direction of N, N cap from one dipole to another. Okay. So now question says, assume that R is much, much greater than, uh, capital R is much, much greater than small R and capital omega square is equal to Q square upon 4 pi epsilon R cube M. Uh, the angular frequency of a small oscillation of diatomic molecule R. So when this, di uh, this dipole oscillates separately, uh, its angular frequency is given to be omega equal to root under K by mu. Okay. But this dipole is now oscillating under the influence of this dipole or this dipole is oscillating under the influence of this dipole. So basically now considering influence of one dipole on another, we have to find the angular frequency of oscillation. Okay. So these are uh, frequencies given. So basically these are frequency of normal mode of oscillation okay, in which both the molecules will be vibrating with same frequency. Okay. So normal mode of uh, oscillation ka frequency be aware so that we have to find okay so let us do that see what we'll do is during vibration see suppose this this is a dipole this this was negative charge and this was positive charge and this is another dipole so this is a uh, negative charge and this is positive charge separation here to here remains capital r but 
since it is vibrating, so at some instant, suppose its separation becomes small r1, and its separation becomes becomes a small r2. Okay. So therefore, now if we write potential energy of system, so potential energy of system, if we write, suppose this bond strength we represent by a spring. Okay. So potential energy of this molecule will be equal to self potential energy. You can say this is half k, and now uh, separation is R1, equilibrium separation is R, so elongation or compression will be equal to R1 minus R. That is, so that is the change in bond, bond length we can say uh, for each dipole. So that will be equivalent to elongation or compression in a spring. Okay, so we are representing this bond by a spring of a spring constant k. So here we are writing half k, and this is either elongation square or compression square. For this dipole also, we can write it as half k. And this is R2 minus R whole square, where R is equilibrium separation, which is given in the question here. Okay, this R. Now, because of the interaction between the two dipole, we, we have this term, this put interaction potential energy. See here, dipole moment of the two dipole is in same direction. We know that dipole moment is from negative to positive uh, charge. Okay, so P1 vector is in this direction, and P2 vector is also in this direction. So P1 dot P2 will simply become P1 into P2. And here, N cap is suppose in this direction. So he, from here, you will get a negative sign. And from here also, dot product will give you a negative sign. So negative, negative, that becomes positive. So effectively, from here also, you get P1 into P2. So from here, P1 into P2, here also P1 into P2 will get. So uh, basically, it will become minus 2P1 multiplied by P2 and divided by obviously 4 pi epsilon naught R12 whole cube. So R12 is basically this R. Okay, so therefore, if you do just a, a little calculation from here, you will get here, uh, uh, minus 2 P1 into P2 divided by 4 times not R cube. So potential energy that we are getting interaction potential energy is P1 into P2 divided by twice P1 into P2 because there is a term 3 and minus 1. So this is minus 2. Okay, so minus 2 and 4 pi epsilon naught and R cube. That's what we get. Now we know that dipole moment we write like this p is equal to charge multiplied by separation so here separation will be this may agar aap separation likhenge theek hai to ye r1 hai aur second case mein separation likhenge so that is q into r2 ho jayega okay so that's what we are going to get so interaction potential energy is 1 by 2 k or here we get r1 minus r whole square and plus 1 by 2 k and here r2 minus r whole square and minus, we can put this here, 2 times Q square, and we'll get here R1 into R2. We are putting the value of P1 and P2 here, 4 pi epsilon naught and R cube. So that's what we have obtained. That is the interaction potential energy of this system. Okay, so now, see here, I'm not using the force approach. I'm using the uh, potential energy approach for calculation of frequent uh, vibration frequency or frequency of normal mode so what i'll do is i'll write the coefficient matrix for this uh, potential energy okay so coefficient matrix if i write okay we will get here see from here where r is constant r1 is variable so coefficient of r1 square if you calculate you will get here k by 2 so that i'll call one 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 element it is generally first coordinate square coefficient is called one one element. Okay, and uh, from here second var variable is R two, so its coefficient is square is again k by two. So we'll write uh, two two element is k by two, and now here you see one two uh, uh, variable one into variable two ka jo product hai, its coefficient is this much. We'll take half of that coefficient. So that is basically here minus q square upon four pi epsilon naught and R q. And here also you will get minus q square 4 pi epsilon naught r cube. So actually, when you write coefficient matrix, uh, variable 1 square ka jo coefficient hota hai, that is written as 1 1 element. Variable 2 square coefficient is written as 2 2 element. And variable 1 multiplied by variable 2. Of, uh, we take half of coefficient of uh, r12 actually as 1 2 as well as 2 1 element. Okay. So that's why uh, one two element and two one element has been written as half of this coefficient. Okay. So that is the potential energy of this system. Okay. Now if I write uh, kinetic energy of this system, see kinetic energy. If you write P, 
this is kinetic energy the kinetic energy will be equal to actually half this is uh, basically relative separation between the two okay so you will have to write like this since we are using relative separation between the two as r1 r2 uh, sorry r1 and here we are using r2 so you will have to write kinetic energy of first dipole as uh, r1 dot square half mu r1 dot square and for second dipole you will write kinetic energy as half mu and r2 dot square where mu is reduced mass so whenever we use relative coordinate between two objects okay and you write kinetic energy we write it as like this okay so now you see here t is equal to actually here central mass of system is uh, not vibrating otherwise we'll have to include the kinetic energy of central mass also see uh, when uh, uh, a system vibrates central mass actually in this in such cases uh, remains at rest so we that's why we are not including kinetic energy of central mass otherwise we we would have included energy of kinetic energy of central mass also okay all right so mu is here mu is actually mass by 2 so you will get here m by 4 here r1 dot square and here also m by 4 and r2 dot square that's what you get so now we can write kinetic energy coefficient matrix as see first velocity square coefficient is m by 4 so that if one one element will be m by 4 second velocity square coefficient is m by 4 so two two element will be m by 4 and there is no uh, term present uh, which contains a uh, product of two velocities so that's why one two and two one element will be zero so velocity one velocity multiplied by velocity is not velocity two is not present that's why we'll say that two one and one two element are zero so now we have potential energy matrix we have kinetic energy matrix option matrices these are actually now what i'll do is i'll write i will use characteristic equation uh, for getting frequency of normal mode uh, so which is written as but before that let us do one thing see there was one uh, notation given omega square is equal to this this much q square upon 4 pi epsilon r cube m so q square 4 pi epsilon r cube will become equal to m omega square so what i'll do here is i'll write in its place m omega square so this potential energy matrix can be written like this and here k by 2 see here we had calculated k is, a, is actually m omega square by 2 uh, so we can write k by 2 as m omega square by 4 so let's do that here k by 2 will be equal to m omega square by 4 and here also we get m omega square by 4 and here we get minus m capital omega square and here also we get minus m and capital omega square so that is the potential energy matrix okay see we have used this notation q square 4 pi epsilon naught is m omega square okay so now we can use characteristic equation v matrix minus omega prime d square this is the frequency of vibration actually because omega is already has been used so we'll have to use some other symbol here and kinetic energy matrix this determinant is equal to zero so when we solve this equation we'll get the frequency of vibration so let's uh, subtract okay so this matrix multi uh, minus omega square times this matrix okay so when you do that you get here see we'll get here m omega square by 4 minus from here you get m and multiplied by omega prime square by by 4 okay and this side there is actually this is zero so here it uh, will be just m capital omega square and here we'll get m capital omega square and here you get m omega square by 4 minus m omega prime d square by 4. This determinant is equal to 0. We have to solve this determinant. Okay, just a minute. So we have to solve this determinant equation. This determinant equation we have to solve. See, m is common, so we can divide by, we can take m outside. All right. So this equation will become, so let us open this determinant we get here omega square minus omega primed whole omega primed square by 4 here also it's the same thing so we'll get here whole square minus m we have cancelled out from all the terms so from here we get my capital omega square whole square that is equal to 0 so we can remove the square from both the terms so we get here omega square minus omega primed square divided by 4 that will be equal to plus minus capital omega square 
Okay, so just do cross multiplication. So you get here omega square minus omega primary square. That is equal to plus minus four times capital omega square. Okay. So from here we get capital omega prime d square is equal to. We can bring it to this side. So this will become omega square or minus plus four capital omega square. That's what we have. So if we once we use plus sign and once we use minus sign, so we are basically getting omega prime. One value is. One value of omega prime will be equal to omega square and minus four capital omega square. This is one value. So we'll uh, take a square root both sides. So we'll get here omega prime, and then here also omega prime is equal to omega square and plus four capital omega square. Okay. So these are the frequencies of normal mode of vibration. Okay. So this was. See, I haven't solved this question by force method. Okay, so you, what you people can do is you can try solving it by force method, but I think it won't be uh, straightforward get sol sol getting solution of this equation by force method. But still, you can try because force method is also a method for getting answer to such questions. All right. <laughs> okay, so we see that here uh, option four is matching. Sorry, option three is matching. Omega squared plus four omega. Uh, is square under root and omega square minus four omega square. So that's what uh, the answer is. Okay. If you want to, if you have any comment, okay, you can just uh, send your comment on my number. Okay, this is eight seven five zero two seven zero three six three. So if you have any comment or any query related to such discussion, you can uh, WhatsApp me on this number. All right. Thank <laughs> you.